Do you believe in magic wearing a massive hat? It's a difficult skill and time consuming at that. And it's magic, the explodious kind. The best role to make your party go fully blind. I'll tell you about the magic if you insist I must. But if I stand in AoEs, then healers gotta adjust. Healers, why didn't you adjust? Welcome to a crap guide to Final Fantasy. <laughs> The last group of the derps per Cirque's job is the magical range DPS, or just magic for short. Look at the hat, look at the hat, nothing up my sleeves. You are the most important person in the party because when the going gets tough, a big hat is required. And the amount of damage you do is proportionally connected to the size of your brim. Where the melee is sniffing up the boss's farts and the ranged are shouting yo mama jokes while making love to the arena's boundaries, you are the healthy middle, standing your ground till you go down to pound town when you found the sound that makes the bad guys frown. You don't do as much damage on average as the melees, instead to trade it off for the utility of being able to attack at a range from anywhere in the arena. With one major difference from your physical range cousin, the cast bar. That little lightish red loading beam that you see just about every other main story quest when you have to search a suspicious book or scout out for the next place Thancred will find yet another new color of depression. Most of your skills require you to stand perfectly still in order to have your big numbers to go off, and if you so much as special edition Han Solo your neck to get a better angle at your hot naked tank, your skill stops and everybody sees how you are no longer looking respectfully. Luckily, every single casting job usually has a lewd calendar's worth of tools to circumvent you having to staple your feet to the floor, which does mean in order to up your mobility without losing out on DPS, you'll need to learn the right sequence of buttons to press like you're playing a seven-dimensional accordion. That said, there's one universal trick to upping your mobility no matter the job, and that's the maneuver known as as the slide, slide casting. casting. Though you normally have to wait for the entirety of the cast bar to complete, little known fact, once it reaches about four fifths of the way through, you need no longer restrain your movements as though your feet were sweating Gorilla Glue, and you can afford a small amount of movement without losing possible uptime. Cool tip, this applies not only to the magic DPS, but any skill for any job that has a cast bar. So you can even be a sliding, slicing samurai. Watch out. The magic limit break, similar to the ranged DPS, is an AOE that deals less base damage than the melees, but can hit multiple targets. In this case, a massive circle instead, and now you can make fun of the boss for not moving out of the obviously telegraphed danger puddle for a change. Boy, do I love throwing stones out of my glass house. The family of magic is made up of three siblings. Okay, that's a lie, it's actually four, but the smallest one kind of went a weird career path, and they're not often invited to the New Year's parties. The Black Mage is a fantastic job if you're a fan of Cookie Clicker, because you're pressing the same button over and over again ad nauseum to see big number go brrrr. During rotation, you start out headbanging explosions at the bad guy like a until you're completely out of mana. Then you go into a goth phase, where you chug a bunch of cold energy drinks, getting you back to peak performance, where you can go back to- Although you have tools to keep yourself mobile like the other mages, you will often be the least dancey and find yourself pitching a tent like you just discovered the sniper tower on Rust. It also wins the award for having the... slowest... leveling. experience ever. Next is a summoner, who has gone through so many reworks that odds are by the time this video is published it'll have already been changed into a tank job with four dots and another job stone. You summon the dragon that nearly destroyed the world five years ago, which some may consider in poor taste if they happen to have a loved one's name written in the 7th Umbral Calamity Memorial Museum, and after you're done making them relive their trauma, get to double, triple, and quadruple down on using avatars of terror by summoning life-size copies of three monstrosities that killed a lot of innocent people. Chili Boy gives you slow casts and a gap closer, Thick Thigh Bird Woman drops a mildly uncomfortable breeze, and she, as well as Chicken Nugget, turns you into a physical range DPS, where you no longer have to worry about the cast bar anymore. Suck it, Black Mage. After you're finished offending the local countryside, you bring out a big firebird that'll restore the party's health. Hey, if you're gonna make range DPS obsolete, might as well do the same for healers too, right? Lastly, the Red Mage, the most fashionable job. You steal gimmicks from everybody else like you're a YouTuber wanting to make more than minimum wage. You've got a heal like a White Mage, but a little bit less thick. You've got explosions like a Black Mage, but a little bit less- and you even get a backflip to your death like a dragoon, but a little bit more sexy. sexy. In combat, you flip between using black and white magic attacks in order to build up a mana gauge to spend slashing your sword with a whole lot of sexual tension. Maybe lifting the enemy's chin with the tip of it, saying some threatening innuendo while you're at it. What makes you special, aside from the sick drip and stylish moves, is that after each spell you hard cast with a cast bar, any spell that follows is instant, meaning you only have to sit still about half of the time. Suck it, black mage. This also means you're even more efficient at raising down allies than the healer, since you have essentially infinite swift casts, and the only thing holding you back is the fact that Rezzing the whole party will suck you dry like you're an anime boy with no eyes. Red Mage's limit break is also special in that it- Think fast, Jungle Arts! And now you know how to-
Yeah, I didn't forget, I was just hoping that you had. Playing Blue Mage is only a portion of the Blue Mage experience. The rest of it is starting sentences involving the job with the words, what about? Yes, though it may be classified in the magical range DPS category, blue is unique in the fact that one, to Blue Mage, is to suffer. And two, it is considered a limited job, so it has to sit in the corner all by itself while the rest of the kids on the playground actually get to hang out. You are unable to play Blue Mage with the other jobs in most level synced and current content, especially high-end stuff like Savage Raids and ERP. Why is this? Because if it weren't, whoever's in charge of designing and balancing the elaborate and complex boss fights at Square Enix would probably be under suicide watch. The Blue Mage's unique power is that it can learn a ton of skills, spells, and abilities from the various enemies and bosses in the game, including, but not limited to, <gasps> there's Ultra Vibration and Rose of Destruction and Sticky Tongue Snore Mustard Bomb, Abyssal Transfixion, Quasar Malediction of Water and Fire and Gone, Peculiar Life Feather, Rain and Shock Strike, Song of Torment and Basic Instinct, Flying Frenzy and Loom, Acorn Bomb, Sonic Boom, Flying Sardine, Jake Hit, Final Sting, Triple Trident and White Wind in Level 5, Petro 5000 Needles kinda sucks. There's Piercing Jet and Fates and Trench Fusion and Blaze, Shoko Meteor and Self Destruct. And now you know how to play magic, you're welcome. Suck it, Black Mage.